Watch the video very closely. I think you guys should be pretty proud of yourselves. It looks really nice. We're, uh, we're getting better. And considering the amount, the lack of time we're spending on land, you guys are all doing quite well. Uh, we talked about trapezing, particularly um, hand trapping. Remember, you got to get really good at hand trapping after tax and jibes. You don't need to be in a rush and hooking yourself up. So make sure you're getting good at the uh, coming out of tacks and jibes, flattening the boat, helping the boat accelerate, hooking yourself in. And in the case of upwind, not rushing to get the main sheet in your hand. The skipper needs to practice acceleration and how to sail the boat with the main sheet in their hand. They get the boat up to speed after tacks, and then it's the uh, hand transfer with the main sheet is done. So we talked about hand trapping. We talked about hanging with one hand. We are all going to recognize that um, we are not strong enough to do the tasks required to hand trap and get hooked in properly. You should be able to disconnect yourself during tacks and jibes, hanging by one arm, kind of like a monkey hanging from a limb with one arm. You have to be able to pull yourself up as you're holding on with that one hand. So I do recommend uh, rock climbing. So if there's a parent out there or something or a kid that wants to coordinate some rock climbing at a gym, um, that is the best way to improve your grip strength and your arm and shoulder strength and your leg strength, which is important as you stand straight up onto the rail. So hand trapping, really important. Hanging by one arm, being able to do that and raise and, and pull yourself up and down in that position. We then talked about uh, wire to wire footwork. So we tried to start giving you a little bit of how do you break down boat handling maneuvers. And so what you're going to do as you improve and you're able to keep the boat upright better, you're going to start to go into analyzation mode where you are going to actually slow speed walk through the maneuver on land. So what we did is we taught you that when you're out on the wire, you stood up not coming in, but actually standing up first, holding on to the trap wire with one arm, and then doing the, um, let's see, it was front foot goes in first, then the back foot went in, and as you grabbed the new trapeze wire and went out, it was back foot, front foot. So again, it's as you swing in, or as you stand up and swing in, you're going front foot in, back foot across the boat, across the middle of the boat. Then you grab the new trap wire and do back foot and front so foot. So we worked on wire to wire footwork and let's practice that again uh, before tomorrow's practice. We also talked on land a little bit about the, the apparent wind changes. Uh, as we head up and we head down. So we can control the apparent wind downwind, uh, increasing it by heading up a little and decreasing the apparent wind by going down a little. We are looking for kind of a steady apparent wind strength in this whole thing. Always remembering though that lots of power is good downwind. So, you know, in the conditions we've been in, haven't been on the edge of control, but still, if if you don't feel like you have some pressure in the boat, you're probably going too low. Um, and definitely, as it gets windy, we really, really, really start to um, sail on the edge of control more. You'll go your fastest downwind there, and you control the apparent wind with your steering. Okay, then we went out and we did the figure eight drill. Very good work. You want to work on that to kind of coordinate your communication and your balance as you're doing maneuvers. The tacking around was easy. The biggest thing we learned on the figure eight drill is that the crew needs to have the jib sheet 
because you can't just leave the jib where it is. If you stall the jib, you're going to take forever to get to that next buoy. So if the jib, if it, in our, in our uh, drill, we had the wind there, and so when we were going over here to do the tack around drill, uh, the jib would get out to that far to get the telltales to fly. So that told us what point of sail we're on. We were between a beam reach and a broad reach. As we head up, the main goes in faster than the jib. The jib does come in, but slowly we tack and then the crew immediately looks at the telltales and you would have noticed that you were going to have to have your jib tighter because the wind was coming this direction and you would keep your telltales flying and then continue the figure eight drill. Crew has to have the jib sheet and the crew is behind the mast um, because that gets the bow out of the water. If your bow, if you're in front of the mast when you're doing pre-start and kind of boat handling maneuvers, your bow's digging into the water. It takes twi a lot more rudder to get the bow to go up into the wind or to go through the wind. So the crew is behind the mast. The skipper is positioned just in the right place so that we're not pooching the stern or we're not sinking the stern. So the skipper has to be far enough forward so that the water is just at the perfect part on the stern and uh, not coming into the boat but we don't want the bow in the water. So the crew's behind the mast with the jib sheet, adjusting the jib as we do the maneuvers. The biggest thing we learned on the jibe around drill was that we would come this direction as we did the figure eight and jibing around, you need to have a good boat length and a half at least. The boat's not a great turning boat like an FJ. Um, it can be if you do it right, but it's harder you need at least a boat length, boat length and a half up. Then as you come down here and the boom swings across, you need to straighten it for a second. A little S jibe and then you're immediately going up here. This would have been about between a beam reach and a close reach in our drill because the wind on our figure eight drill was coming not perpendicular here to these two buoys, was coming this way. So we'd be on a there, again, boat length and a half wide, keep the boat flat, and if it's a windy jibe, that's a big deal. We should write that down. Tacking and jibing, tacking and jibing, we have to look at the water before we do tacking and jibing. We have to know if, if it's a light air tack or a jibe, medium air, or if it's gonna be a heavy air. So look for the wind. At right before you're tacking and jiving. Okay, this is what good teams do. Okay, so we go into this jibe, it's a windy jibe. We would turn down with a flat boat and right here we would straighten it just a little as the boom goes across and then we would come back up uh, and head for the next buoy. So again, um, I hope I had that on the camera there. I might have to re-record that, but anyway. Um, Make sure the jibing portion of the figure eight drill is really the most valuable. And remember, wide S turn here if you have to and get going towards the next one. Wide S turn here a little bit and uh, practice holding the boom as the boom goes across. Your hand goes from the main sheet. It's still holding the main sheet. It goes up and grabs the boom on the top, helps the boom across. Okay, so we did the figure eight. Then we did a bunch of windward lures you should be able to do five laps at least without stopping. And the reason that is, uh, the purpose of the windward leeward drill there is um, to, uh, it's several things, but one of them is to do several laps. Don't keep stopping after one lap. You wanna do these windward leewards, you wanna do four, five, six in a row without stopping. That's for physical fitness, that's for making it so that you, when you're in a race, you can consistently do it three times or four times or however many times you have to do it and you don't have problems like the sheets going under the bow or whatever. You can never do enough spinnaker work for these boats. You always can get better at the spinnaker work and, and the windward leeward rhythm. You gotta get in a rhythm. So don't stop after one or two and restart. You guys gotta keep on going without breaks um, um, and get good at it. 
um, let's see. Then we did three races, and I liked the races. I didn't see anybody look up wind. Maybe I did see one boat. Look up wind at one minute. Okay? Because you guys, sometimes it would be a really windy start, and you guys would be heeling over off the line like crazy, or it would be a super light one, and I would see the crew not hooked in, leaning forward. They would be, like, standing, trying to figure out what to do. Uh, there was enough wind at this practice to be trapping all of the time. There was never a time where you needed to sit in and hike. So you should have been, at one minute, look up wind, say to yourself, okay, this say to the skipper or the crew, this is going to be a medium wind start, or this is going to be a windy start with a big hole on the left. Do you see that? You know, you we have to start sailing. We can't just look at the start as hitting the starting line. You know, we have to sail, the start, you know, we have to sail well after the start. Very good. So what did we do good in practice? Uh, what did we do good in practice? We did better at a flat boat. So you guys did better at keeping the boat flat, especially during the figure eight drill. You guys were doing good at, at not having big heel overs after your attacks and jibes. Um, everybody's getting more comfortable on the trapeze. Everybody is getting better at getting the jib and the main right. So um, we still are all over the ballpark, but this is where you're going to make your biggest gains is main, sail tr main sheet trim and jib sheet trim. And we're getting better at it. We're still all over the place. Some of us are outside the spreader. Some are inside the spreader. This last practice, the leech of the jib was probably an inch inside the spreader, at the very least lined up with the spreader tip. And then if it got some big puffs, which we had a couple of times, maybe the leech would go outside the spreader tip. But get your jib. We're getting better at that. Everybody looked more consistent. And especially uh, a couple teams got much better at not having the mainsail out six feet to a foot. If you trim that main sheet out six inches, the crew's going to have to come in. <laughs> you lose so much power if you don't keep the main within one to four inches of your max trim in those conditions. If you get more than three or four inches out on the main sheet, the crew is going to have to swing in or swing forward. So we're getting better at that, better at trim. Okay, so uh, let's work on our physical fitness. I think pull-ups, sit-ups, um, push-ups, six days a week, and rock climbing. I, I suggest we get a group team thing going where we start going to a rock climbing gym, try to get a special deal. I can't coordinate it. Maybe you guys could. Um, I think this would make a huge difference in our physical fitness. But again, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, um, six days a week. You don't have to do a ton. And then the last thing I want you to do is go ahead on YouTube. On YouTube, uh, search John Rogers Sailing and subscribe uh, because you can go back years and look at some other people. Maybe a couple of your coaches are in that. A video from back all the way back to 2013, but there's the 29er Midwinters West a few times back. So go back through, um, there's a couple hundred videos there on YouTube and go back a few years and start watching those videos a little bit. Okay, very good job, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.